This is the Create Your Own Life Show, where we talk about things that matter. We're free thinkers and we don't believe in participation trophies. We're not afraid and unapologetically ourselves. It's time to create your own life. Hey, what is up, everybody? Jeremy here. It is Tuesday. It is the 5th of April, 2022, and this is your Create Your Own Life Show. hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, I hope you guys um, are really going into this week ready to perform, ready to rock. And uh, we have our first health and fitness episode in a very long time, uh, which, interestingly enough, I feel like kind of uh, coincides with me kind of getting my strength back. I know on the on the bench the other day I was putting up uh, 305 for a good solid three. We just didn't quite get that fourth one. I failed there. And on deadlifts, I actually got 500 up recently as well. So um, I've been really paying attention to taking better care of my body and listening to my body a lot, which I think is great. I'm definitely not pulling the weights I was in my, my mid-20s when I was benching 455, deadlifting uh, 635, and squatting 705. Um, but I'm getting a lot out of, you know, my body at, you know, almost 35 and um, about 25 to 30 pounds lighter as well as I'm, I'm about 165 pounds. So in this episode, we actually have with us today Douglas Bertram, and he is the CEO and founder of Structural Elements. And the thing I'm really excited about in this episode is we get we talk a lot about connecting tissue, you know, the, the things that you need to know in your joints and, and issues like that. We talk about the the proper way to get maximum performance in your body from your body, and actually how Chinese medicine connects with traditional medicine, and to really change the way you recover, change the way your body powers itself. And uh, there is so much to learn in this episode about biohacking your body the right way, uh, and and recovering even better, and and at the same time preventing a lot of those future injuries as well. You guys are going to love this interview with Doug. I got a ton out of it, and I hope you guys do as well. Before we jump into this interview, though, I just want to quickly thank a couple companies that made this possible. To our friends over at MyPillow, who right now are offering you up to 66% off of select products if you use my promo code, which is C-Y-O-L, over at MyPillow.com. Also, shout out to our friends over at Audible, who right now are offering you a free audiobook download in a free month of their service. Right now I'm reading The Great Reset by Glenn Beck. Uh, I actually just wrapped that one up, and I've reached out to to Glenn's uh, co-author on that because I want to try and get him on the show because Glenn's timing just didn't work, but I really want to discuss this a little broader on the show, so still working on that. So if you want to get that book or any other book for free, courtesy of Audible, just head over to jeremyryanslate.com slash book. That is jeremyryanslate.com slash book. Also, if you have not yet subscribed to the show on YouTube or Rumble, be sure to do that. We're also doing shorts on YouTube now, so you're going to see that over there as well. And we're really focusing on growing the channel, make a bigger impact, so please check us out, share us with your friends. If you haven't checked out the audio version of the podcast, it's over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you listen. While you're over there, leave us a five-star rating and a review, as that does help us to really grow the show and, and make a big impact. All right, without further ado, let's get into this interview with Douglas Bertram. Hey, what is up, everybody? Jeremy here. And guys, I'm very excited for the conversation we have today. We have Douglas Bertram with us today, and he's helping peak performers to achieve flow. He is the founder and CEO of Structural Elements and has 27 years of clinical experience treating patients with his proprietary combination of Chinese medicine and manual therapy. He's an educator, public speaker, and entrepreneur. His education includes a BA in contemplative psychology, a minor in traditional and Eastern arts, um, and he is really doing some incredible things about how they're addressing the body and health. Doug, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, man. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks so for I, having I, me. I want to find out for you first and foremost, you know, you've been in this sphere a long time. You've been helping people with their health for a long time. But, you know, what got you interested or, or what made you feel like this was your mission, man? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I, I have been standing over a table for 27 years. 
And uh, people used to not believe that, which was always kind of flattering. And after, uh, you know, scaling businesses and having kids and all of that, now people are starting to not question that as much as they used to. Um, but honestly, it comes down to one really simple event in my life that got me on this track. Um, I lived to play soccer as a kid, and uh, I, was a, I was a goalkeeper most of, most of my life. And uh, um, I broke my wrist uh, really badly when I was a freshman in high school. And I had a really negative experience with the orthopedic surgeon. He, he kind of told me I should consider myself lucky that he saved my fingers, but don't expect a lot of use out of that hand. Oh, my God. And, uh, we had and, a really negative know, experience like, myself. You know, my, my dad broke his arm like 10 years ago now. And the orthopedic surgeon that we went to, like, didn't, like, handle it correctly. So his arm is still at a funky angle, which has been really weird for golf. So, like, yeah, I get it, man. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for a kid that lives to play goalkeeper, that's it's not something you want to hear at the age of 14. And uh, on, the, on the flip side of that, I went to an occupational therapist who was – totally amazing. And he said, don't listen to any of that. He said, the beautiful thing about the human body is it has the ability to heal given the right set of circumstances. We're just going to give you the right set of circumstances and we're going to get this thing, you know, hundred percent. And I was the starting goalkeeper the next year, you know, my sophomore year. So to me, that was like, you know, it, it was all about setting the context of what's possible, you know? And, and once I, I really realized uh, you know, that the human body it does have this amazing ability to transform and to heal. Um, I just became obsessed and that's kind of been, you know, my, my fascination ever since. Why do you think most people don't look at it that way? Right. It's, it's interesting because it's like, you know, there's a, there's a pill for this. There's a, a, a treatment for this. There's never a, okay, well, what's happening? How do we solve it? And how do we get to the root cause of it? I guess, why do most people not look at it the way you're looking at it? Well, I don't think our medical system it, at large is set up to empower the patient. I mean, I think we have kind of learned that the, the authority is outside of ourselves. And unless we're lucky enough to come in contact with a practitioner that educates us differently, um, I think a lot of people live in that paradigm, you know, that they, they don't listen to their bodies, they don't trust the, the, the wisdom of their intuition, and they don't realize that you can actually control how the body responds to stress, how the body responds to injury by not only the things that you put in your body, but by, you know, freeing up those resources uh, to, to, to heal fast. Well, I, I guess one of the things you and I were talking about uh, before we started recording here is is the, the thing that nobody thinks of and something that you said is vital. And, 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 you know, being somebody that's been a competitive athlete for, you know, in the fitness world for a long time, like I get that too. And that's the idea of, of connective tissue. Um, you know, like, you know, you may be able to bench 315, man, but if you haven't gotten your connective tissue ready to get, you know, handle that, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're set up for a rude awakening. Like you're going to have some real issues, like connective tissue injuries are, are, are some really rough injuries. So I guess like, what should we be looking at um, with connective tissue? And I guess, how does this whole thing relate to Chinese medicine and peak performance? Yeah, it's a loaded question, man, but, <laughs> but I love it. Um, so, so when, when, uh, when people hear connective tissue, they don't really have any concept of what function connective tissue plays in the body. Mm -hmm. And they just, you know, even when you study anatomy, uh, they don't really teach anything about connective tissue. Uh, they dissect the long connective tissue to give you origin and insertion based anatomy. But uh, it, it's actually really difficult to separate muscles with you need a scalpel and and it's it's you really need to know where to mm -hmm. cut. You know, it's not intuitive at all. Um, the reality of our anatomy is that there is uh, a you know, type of tissue uh, called fascia that encases every structure in the body continuously. And it surrounds the organs, it attaches to the periosteum of the bone, it separates not only one muscle from its neighbor, but each individual muscle fiber from the muscle fiber next to it. Um, it encases nerve endings, it surrounds blood vessels, it attaches to the skin. Um, I mean, there is just this immense system that uh, only recently is being recognized as an organ. And it's the largest organ in the body, larger than the skin. And it is really an organ of communication is, is ultimately what its primary function is. And you mentioned, you know, powerlifting. It's what communicates to a neighboring muscle that it needs to help. 
right? So when you're loading one muscle and you take it into a range of motion where you now need backup from another muscle, uh, the tug and the tension on the connective tissue is what facilitates the engagement of the neighboring muscle to perform an activity. Um, you linked in there, the, the, the other loaded part of the question was how does this all relate to Chinese medicine? And uh, I'm going to kind of try to keep it high sure. level, but in Chinese medicine, uh, you talk about a system of meridians or pathways, energetic pathways through the mm -hmm. body. And a lot of the goal of Chinese medicine is to get free flow of energy, right? Blocked energy, bad, flowing yes. energy, good, right? And, and But ultimately, we have no real connection to what does energy mean? Even the professors that I was paying a lot of money in my in my education in Chinese medicine couldn't really tell me what energy really was. And the moment that I started realizing that the meridians are fascia, they're fascial planes that are uninterrupted through the body, and that the chi flow through these meridians or along the fascia is simply communication. It's the ability for that system to self-sense and communicate to the rest of the body what it's experiencing. And the more that we have awareness of that system, the more that we listen to that communication, uh, the, the, more, uh, well, the higher functioning that, that, that tissue You know what's becomes. really interesting is, the, is, the, is one of the last things you said there about the idea of awareness, right? And I think that when somebody, you know, they work out a lot, they compete a lot, they do a lot of different things, you start to become, you know, aware of your body. Right. You know, uh, I, I can think of times that I've started warming up for squats and I'm like, you know what? Like something just doesn't feel right in my left hip flexor. You know, you try and loosen it up. It doesn't get loose. And you're like, you know what? Maybe today isn't the right day to squat. Maybe I need to do something different to handle that. And I think that awareness of your body comes from a long time and really listening to it. I think you see a, a lot of, you know, in professional sports, I think it's changing. But you think see at the same time we're told to ignore our body, right? We're told to, to get, you know, think past it, you know, take this drug, do whatever to keep playing. And that's how a lot of injuries uh, start to happen. I guess when we're looking at that, how do we get better at listening to our body and knowing when this, hap this is happening? Well, I think it, it, it first starts with uh, buying into, you know, the awareness that this, this system even exists, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's hard to pay attention to a system that you don't even know about. Right. Once you realize that that the fascia is completely um, necessary to allow for one muscle to glide past its neighbor and that there's a, a property to healthy fascia that's called visoelasticity. It's the ability for tissue to deform and return back to its original shape. Um, that's healthy function of fascia. When we overtrain, when we load the connective tissue with too much force, when we're underhydrated, when we're under undernourished, that tissue or too stressed out is the other big one, that tissue starts to become uh, tense and it loses that elasticity. And when it loses the elasticity, it transfers load onto neighboring structures, whether that's joints or muscular attachments. So in the example that you gave of noticing, hey, my hip flexor is tight, you know, I think that maybe today is not the day. Especially when you're performing something explosive that has a high risk of injury, the signaling that you're paying attention to is your fascia bidirectionally telling the nervous system, we have a problem here. And if you don't listen to it, right, you're going you're gonna to create harm. It's, it's a response saying that there's a threat. And, and that's, that's how our autonomic nervous system works. It, you know, the brain can tell the fascia, hey, stiffen up, there's danger here. And the fascia can tell the brain, hey, we have a problem here, you know, kick on the sympathetic you know, nervous system and, and respond to it. You know, it's bi-directional, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, this is book. super intriguing, man. Like, I, 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 I don't know if you've seen me, I've been like jotting down so many questions this is bringing up for me. And I guess one of the, the, the you said, uh, and you can correct me if this is, if I have the, the pronunciation of this wrong, you said visoelasticity, was that the correct word? So, so That's you were correct. talking yes. about how that is like, you know, um, I guess the elasticity of the muscle and how it works and how it slides. Um, you know, they talk about, um, you know, people getting, having an easier time tearing muscles as they get older. Is that because of that issue or is that related to something else? Um, it's directly related to this issue. Um, so the healthy connective tissue is made up of collagen mm -hmm. fibrils and those fibrils form these little um, triangular matrices and those triangular matrices are full of 
fluid called hyaluronic acid. Mm -hmm. And healthy tissue allows kind of the spongy, elastic, you know, uh, response. When we, again, get dehydrated, when we overtrain, when we do the same uh, activity over and over again without, without uh, variation, um, we collapse those fluid filled vacuoles. And instead of having, think of like bubble yeah. wrap, if you, if you pop all of the bubbles in the bubble wrap, now all of a sudden, if you pull it tight, you're going to have, you know, all of those little cells coming much closer together. And as those collagen fibrils align and get closer to each other without the fluid in between them, they form what's called a focal adhesion. And those focal adhesions stiffen and you lose that elastic property. And they form to protect us against stress, right? Um, they form in, in response to stress. However, it, it also holds us in a, a state where we're getting a lot of signaling back to the nervous system saying we're, we're not okay. There's, there's, you know, there's threat here. So can we reverse that? Because I know for myself, like one of the one of the big things I, I when I was 19, so we're talking like, gosh, almost 20 years ago now, but I tore my ACL, PCL and meniscus um, like I shredded my knee playing football. And um, one of the things that I supplemented with at the time was like 100 percent liquid collagen. And I found that like my recovery was a lot better because of that. Um, I'm, I'm curious um, is you, we talk about, you know, this elasticity disappearing over time. You talked about those, uh, those areas kind of hardening due to stress, due to use, due to age. Um, is there anything we can do about that? Like, is it supplementing with collagen? Is it how we're training? Is it how we're stretching? Is there anything we can do to preserve that? Or is that just once it's gone, it's gone? No, there's, there, there's a ton that we can do and, and, and it's never too late. Um, the beautiful thing is if you're still above ground and you're still breathing, um, you're still building new cells and you're still you know, re replacing tissue. Mm -hmm. So um, we absolutely can introduce resources to, to change that. Um, you know, the work that we do in our clinics is, is really about finding what we call systematic focal adhesions that have formed. And um, kind of what our secret sauce is at Structural Elements is that we've mapped out uh, where these things form in a, in a numerical grid. So if you have, uh, you know, say you shredded your knee, like your example, you're going to have areas above and below the knee that are going to have compensated yep. in response to pain and change of gait and, and compensation. But it's not going to be limited to your knee. It's also going to form in your low back. It's also going to form in your neck. As soon as you have any structural imbalance in the body, you are going to start to go through a cascade of compensations until you get your eyes and ears back to level. It's called a neutral horizon. Mm -hmm. You don't go around you know, crooked um, in terms of your eyes and ears. You will do whatever it takes to get that horizon back to neutral. And that all takes effort. Right. And that effort is usually you know, loading big muscles. Those big muscles are considered prime movers. They're designed to move the body. And when you start asking a prime mover to take on a postural role, there's just gross metabolic inefficiency. So it's going to lay down those collagen fibers. It's going to glue muscles together for mechanical advantage. So that's that's kind of how those things show up in the in the in the first place. But to correct them, it's kind of an undoing of that process, right? We use dry needling to address some of those focal adhesions. That's a very effective tool. Um, the difference between how we dry needle and a lot of what's out there is we're not trying to hit a motor point to cause the muscle to contract and for a relaxation response. We actually create what we call a mechanical coupling where we spin the needle and we wrap the collagen fibers around the shaft of the needle. If you think of a fork and a plate of spaghetti, that's kind of a good image for those collagen fibers rafting around the shaft of the needle. And that causes a chemical response from the needle where it actually secretes a lubricating substance to get that glide restored. Um, but that's just the tool that we use. Um, you can also use, you know, self massage tools where you pin, you know, some of those adhesions and you go through an active range of motion to strip those fibers. Um, you can pay attention to your posture so that you're not forming new adhesions. You can do a uh, gentle, you know, myofascial release on a foam roller or yoga. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of different ways that you can get to it. Well, you, you've mentioned uh, like stress here quite a bit and like, you know, what stress does to the body and, and some of the things it causes as well. Um, you know, how can, you know, stress is never going away, right? We're dealing with it every day. And I, and I think for, for some people, you look at the last two years, man, like stress has been like a, you know, on a scale of one to 10, it's been like a 25 for a lot of people. So it, it's been a, a yeah. kind of a, a, a difficult time. So it's not going away. It's, it's how we, how we live and how, how things are. How do we make stress work for us 
And, you know, how do we manage that? Because also as high performance athletes or, or people doing things like it's just the name of the game, man. It's just how it is. Like the body's going to be under stress. Like, so how do we manage that? Yeah. Performance, performance in work and in life and in sport is all dependent on how well we react to stress. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stress is not a bad thing. Yeah. Stress is critical to our survival. It's how we get stronger. It's how we build immunity. It's, you know, it's how we, you know, improve cognitive function. Um, so, you know, it, it is not a bad thing. It's critical to, to our survival and it's critical for growth. Um, well, and I think the, people also lump the, them in as the well, thing, right? Cause there's like, you know, there's, there's also you stress, right? Like there's, there's euphoric stress that can be good for the body too, but people tend to lump it all into stress, you know? Well, you know, it, it, the reality is that stress doesn't differentiate. It mm -hmm. really doesn't. Okay. Um, stress, uh, there's, we have, we have a very, we have a very basic system. We have an on switch and we have an off switch. Mm. Okay. And stress turns, flips the on switch. Okay. So when we have the on switch flipped on it, the, the physiologic responses are very predictable, mm -hmm. right? We're going to increase our heart rate. We're going to, you know, constrict our pupils. We're going to, you know, have uh, shunt blood from the extremities. It, it's, it's a whole physiologic, um, you know, process to get us into a receptive state to perform or to fight or, 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 or flee, right. To flight. Um, the off switch is, is, is the parasympathetic system, right? It, it helps us bring blood flow to the extremities to repair tissue. It helps stimulate digestion. It helps us to absorb nutrients. It helps us to get better oxygen saturation back into the tissue. Um, there, there are just two like clusters of physiologic responses and it doesn't matter if it's physical stress, mechanical stress, chemical stress, emotional stress. It's, it's still an on or an off switch, right? The, the difference is we don't turn the switch off soon enough when we are in a you know when when the when the when the real high stress is, is over after the competition's done right a lot of people stay in that high stress or after you get cut off you know on the highway people stay in that high stress response they don't find the off switch they don't down regulate mm -hmm. so if you're chronically have the stress switch flipped on guess what it's going to start to burn you out you know, I use the example of, you know, you don't, you don't stay in, in, in first gear on the highway, right? You, you have to shift gears. If you don't, you're going to blow up your engine, right? And, but, but somehow we, we think the body is capable to just go, 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 go without any sort of, of, you know, recovery and, and without kind of finding that down regulation. But performance is really about finding little moments where we regroup and we rebalance, even in the, the midst of, of a high demand situation, you know, and that's, it's learning those skills that make the difference of whether somebody gets stronger or gets injured. Does adrenal fatigue play a part in this? Like, do you see that also being an issue as well? Like, cause I, I, I remember like, um, back in the days when I used to be a high school teacher in my early twenties, um, there were nine periods a day, which to me, I thought meant I needed to drink nine large cups of coffee because obviously you go to the teacher's room in between everything. So like I was so cracked out by three o'clock and like my adrenal gland was so messed up and it actually, a lot of the stress issues I had in my body at that time were worse because of that. Like, so do you see this also being an adrenal issue as well? Yeah, one hundred percent. So the think of the adrenals as our furnace, mm -hmm. okay? That's that's gonna you know provide you know heat and and and, and resources uh, to to the body, and and think of being in a stress response as as leaving the door wide open, okay? So if your door is open and the heat's running constantly, eventually that yeah. heater is gonna burn out, right? So the 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 adrenals are are our furnace and the thyroid is our thermostat. Right. And, and if we keep, you know, asking them to juggle this high stress situation, eventually um, they're, they're just going to burn out and you're not going to have the stress hormones to, 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 to balance it back out. And, you know, when people start getting adrenal fatigue, you know, they even though they're exhausted, it affects their ability to get quality sleep. They don't get into that deeper REM sleep. When you're in adrenal fatigue, you just simply aren't getting the, you know, the, the, the hormone balance to, to, you know, properly regulate and, and, and repair tissue. You're going to get low energy, you're going to get fatigue. Um, it just is, is, you know, it's like going into debt, 
right? It's, you know, you're, it's, you're, you're living outside of your means, right? And that's what happens kind of on an energetic level to the body. It's like, yeah, if you get a new credit card with, you know, a $50,000 limit on it, you know, it's party time <laughs> for six months and all of a sudden you hit that limit and now all the funds are gone and you have to figure out how you're yeah. going to pay it back. It's the same thing with the adrenals, you know, you can, you can, you can use them for a while, man. But once, once you hit that limit, you know, you, you've got to hold well, it. It's, it's interesting because I think we, it, and, and I do want to get back to, to what we were talking about stress in just a second but i think this is an interesting thread as part of it as well because we also make these problems worse as i think about in the fitness world you know um one of the things i've seen guys do is okay they'll use pre-workout number one for 30 days and then it stops becoming effective because obviously that's they've depleted their adrenals to that point so then they try pre-workout number two and that one works for a little bit and then they go back to another stimulant and they never actually like get off of this stuff and handle their adrenals and and they're making the problem worse is that something you've seen as well yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, any 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 stimulants that you're introducing to the body, you you're going to have a, a a reaction that it's going to create a, a need for additional uh, down regulation of the nervous system and additional, um, you know, supplementation to to deal with the the negative effects of the stimulant. Yeah. Right. So um, you can get away with it for a period of time, but then you're going to have to, to, to pay the price, yeah. you know, and that that's either going to happen through the body will eventually self-regulate. Mm-hmm. So it'll do so through injury or through illness, um, you know, or, or just uh, an energy crash. Yeah. Right. So eventually the body will just say, no, we're not going to we're not going to give you that response anymore. There, there was a, a product that came out, gosh, like maybe. 15 years ago now and and the 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 main stimulant in it is actually banned by the fda now so they don't sell it but it was called at that point in time it was jack 3d and the 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 stimulant was one three to methylaniline and you would use it and you'd have this like out of body workout experience and then you'd sleep for 17 hours after it like i just can't imagine that being good for you but you know going back to you know these these ideas of you know kind of downshifting a little bit taking care of the body like sure adrenals are part of it but i guess what other things should we consistently be doing so that we're, we're giving our body this relaxation? We're giving this body, our body this ability to, to kind of downshift from the stress. Yeah, well, first thing is, is recognizing what it feels like to be in a stress state. The first thing is the awareness that we are in a stress state. Um, shallow breathing is one of the symptoms. Um, having uh, you know, tightness in the muscles, clenching of the jaw, tightness of the hip flexors, cold hands and feet, um, you know, restlessness when it's time to, to, to try and, and, and relax um, and, and fall asleep. Those are all symptoms that are saying, hey, we're, we're like spun up a little bit and, and something needs to change. Um, fortunately, the nervous system is, is pretty uh, easy to downregulate if we apply the right set of tools. And um, one of the biggest tools that you can do is deep uh, diaphragmatic breathing. And um, diaphragmatic breathing is how we stimulate the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is what stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system to get into a downregulated response. Um, A lot of people have started paying attention to heart rate variability, but very few people really understand how heart rate variability actually works. Um, Heart rate variability is a good indicator of whether we're regulating our stress response because it measures the difference of of our heart rate when we're inhaling versus when we're exhaling. And when we're exhaling, you should the heart should slow down. And that means that we're getting parasympathetic activity. If the heart rate doesn't slow down and we stay in that sympathetic state, our, no, our number's really low. There's not a big difference between inhalation and exhalation. And it shows that you're not getting that parasympathetic breakthrough. But we can force that change, right? We can manipulate it. So some of the ways to do it, I, my favorite thing is the traction exercise, which um, – we um, on our on our patient facing platform SE Lab, which is lab.structuralelements.com. There's a link on top to traction, and that's a it's outside of the paywall. It's an exercise. It takes three minutes a day. You literally lay flat on your back. You flatten your lumbar spine, you flatten your neck, you open the palms up with the arms out to your sides, knees bent, and you breathe for three minutes, just a nice deep diaphragmatic breath. And it is unbelievable how much better you feel after three minutes of laying flat on your back and doing some conscious breathing. And if you do that consistently, it's like taking the trash out in real time. The stress just doesn't accumulate the same. You know, it's, it's a total biohack that we can just, you know, get around that accumulation. That's really, really intriguing because just like thinking of like I'm just in my head, I'm picturing like what that would be like. 
Um, and, and times that I've done that, you, you do feel, you know, the stress, the, 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 the load and things like that come off your spine. Cause like, if you think about it, like our spine is always loaded and very few people unload it. Right. So, so what you're talking about here, like not yeah. only are you allowing the body to reset, you're also unloading your spine, which is a really big deal. Yeah, it's huge. It's, it's, it's critical to get that, um, that, uh, nervous system to downregulate. Because if you're constantly, you know, and, and again, we're all on devices all the time. And, and, you know, when we're on especially small devices, the head goes forward and that loads up the mid back. And the mid back is where all the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated through what's called the dorsal root ganglia. And then in the high neck, in the occiput and in the sacrum is where the parasympathetic dorsal root ganglia are. So unless we're going flat on the back and taking that pressure off the mid back and tucking the chin and opening up the sacrum, it's really hard for the body to shift out of that stress response and, in, and into that that down regulating parasympathetic response and then if you add the breath to that man it's like magic well doug this has been really intriguing man like you, you you've you've i've taken like a couple pages of notes here um for people listening if they want to find out more about you if they're you know finding out how or they want to find out how structural elements can help them you know how is going to be going to be the best way for our listeners to connect with you yeah, well, we have three clinics. I mean, if you're in Maryland or Wisconsin, you're in luck. You know, you can walk in the doors and and, and, and consult with us directly. Um, but the reason we launched uh, our patient-facing platform, which again is 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 uh, stroke, SE Lab is what we call it, but it's Lab dot structural elements dot com. That's the patient facing platform that has just tons of tools to help you learn how to balance the body, how to down regulate the nervous system, how to you know do joint specific rehab so that you're not forming those compensations. And uh, and again, outside of the paywall on that is the traction exercise. So we kind of view that as our gift to everybody. You know, it's like yeah, because it. it, cause it, it takes no special equipment. It only takes three minutes a day. The world would just be a better place if everybody was doing their traction. So um, that's kind of our gift to the world. And, and, uh, and so please, you know, um, and you, you, you have to give it like mm -hmm. 30 days of consistency. And, you know, we're doing it once, it's going to feel relaxing. Doing it, you know, a few times a week, great. You do it consistently for 30 days, you're a different person metabolically.